Welcome to part six of the custom radiator build for the 69Z28. Here I am planishing down the center line of the beads with my planishing hammer. This is in order to put some pre-stretch in the same area that the beads will be formed. Yes, it is very loud. I just want to make sure you can pick up the planishing hammer. Hopefully you can. Okay, I mentioned in uh, my other video that I was going to do two light passes on the um, planishing hammer to give me some extra material here, what we call pre-stretch, so there's enough material to form the bead without deforming the part. So I did the two outside lines. Now I'm gonna do the cross uh, beads, which I'll actually form first. And uh, once I run those, and then we will do the beads, but notice the big uh, twist in the panel, okay? When we stretch the bead into the panel, that theoretically should go away. It's easier to see on the inside of the panel where I pre-stretched it. All those lines that you see, both horizontal and vertical, are the location of the beads. Now the bead roller should still be set up properly from the uh, previous test that we did. Let's give it a try. Okay, I ran a test bead. I planished it the same way. Uh, got a lot of glare. Did it. Uh, two times. There, that's a little bit better. This is the test I just ran. Did it two times on the planishing hammer and then uh, ran it through the bead roller. No cuts, no tears. It's nice and uh, centered on the die. So let's go for it. Okay, here are the cross beads. Now from the other side, now I'm gonna run lengthwise, so I'll have an intersecting bead all along the, uh, uh, I'll call them the tangent or the longest lines. Uh, every three inches will have like, like a grid pattern. You can already see the panel has really straightened out a lot. Okay. But not bad, I think it's going to be easy to straighten out. Okay, there's, there's the bead pattern, if you can see that. Okay. Now the next thing I need to do is lay out the um, beads on this panel. They're going to have to move in a little bit. So I've got... Uh, the reason I put this tape on this panel is because, remember I'm going to put this in the uh, tipping die, in the bead roller, and I'm going to go right along this line. Okay, that gives me this line here, see? The edge of the tape, I have a nice parallel line. I put that tape line on there, uh, sitting in the part, and I butt it up against the flange. So if I have a little bit of extra metal here, or, or not quite enough there, doesn't really matter. 
<laughs> but the flange is roughly a half inch long. So I'll come out here when I, um, when I, see if you can see me. And this light really boogers us up sometimes. When I lay the flange over, it'll come to within 200 thousandths roughly of the black line. The edge of the black line is where the offset bead is gonna go, which is going to drop this down whatever dimension I decide to do. Um, so that's, that's the game plan right now. Uh, let's let's uh, keep going. It came out pretty good. It's actually, for the thickness of this material, I think our... Uh, I think our bead development process was pretty good. Uh, we did two light passes with the planishing hammer right on the center line of the beads, and then uh, all of them, and then we came back and made one pass on the uh, bead roller. I see one more spot I want to go just uh, maybe a quarter inch farther. Okay. I think we're pretty happy with that. Well, I don't know if you are, but I am. Okay, now let's find the new center line of the bead. I'm putting a mark on this panel just as a uh, just a check, see how we're gonna look. All I want to do here is use a the straight edge. Um, you know, I'm not too concerned about the dimension is. What I want to know is how far do I have to come in to. Uh, put the bead on this from this outside surface in. This gives me a good visual reference because I know that the um, tipping die is gonna run right along that inside that piece of black tape. Okay, that's nice and parallel with the outside surface. I'm going to run a bead line right along the edge of the scale. Okay, do the same thing down here. I mean, an inch and an eighth. things down here a little bit. I think what I'm going to do is run this bead right down the dead center of this uh, flange to give me some support out there. I'll stop it right about there and then on this side I'm going to make sure that's nice and square. come across here. So I will, um, I'm gonna run the bead along this area first, and then I'll do this last. I'll intersect right here and right here, and then run it out to here and uh, blend it out. So, gotta hit the planishing hammer again. I wanna show you something. Uh, why I'm doing what I'm doing. So, we start out with a flat panel, okay? And then what we do, this is a cross section looking through it. And then what we do is we run the bead, uh, the um, planishing hammer down the panel at the center line of the bead. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm creating the material into a bubble like that, and the same thing over here, a bubble like that. Why am I going up instead of down? There's a uh, practice that we use when we're forming material. It is called ball and plus. So let's make a bigger example of it here. If this is the cross section and you make your bump go this way, but you really want the material to end up like this, okay? 
Now, I didn't quite go that far on, the, on mine, but what that does is it puts a little bit of stretch in the metal upward, okay? Opposite the direction that you're gonna push your foreman with your bead roller. So what happens is now I've got plenty of metal to push, this, this does not really thin the material out very much at all. It's almost not measurable. However, when I go in the reverse direction, now look at that length of line compared to this length of line. This length of line is gonna to have to stretch a lot more to form than this length of line. So you have a better chance of not over thinning the material using this ball and plus. So basically, uh, we're gonna end up pushing this metal straight down. See if this will take this stuff off. And end up with this bead, okay? It's called balling and plussing. We use it all the time uh, in the tool and die industry when we're designing or developing panels and they, they either need a, a lot of stretch or less stretch or some way to get material in there. That's what we do. Uh, we also use things called metal gainers. And uh, sometimes when you're forming like a fender and it's got a sharp corner and, and the metal just gathers in there too much, I'm pointing at my fender on my car, uh, the, the, too much material and it gathers in there and you get double metal conditions. So you put these metal gainers outside the corner. They might, they might uh, let's say this is the front of your, your car. Your fender comes like this. Here's the grill. Okay, right, tire. Okay, there's your, uh, there's your fender. So if I was to just have this sharp line here and try to draw that metal, you'd, you'd probably tear it in the corner, okay? And you would get double metal all around here. So you get really wavy metal and some of it would overlap. So what we do is we do something similar to this, but we call them metal gainers, okay? So it might look like a, might look like a big sausage or, or you know, might curve around like this. And what that is, is it's a bump like this, except we put a lot of pressure on it. So it pulls the metal out. So it, it pulls it out like this, so it'll wrap around that corner. So it's a technique that's used all the time. Um, makes things better. You keep a more consistent material thickness on the final product. You're not overstretching things and you're not understretching because if you don't have enough stress, uh, stretch in the material, it's gonna wanna like be an oil can. Like it'll flop, flip, flop back and forth and we don't want that. So you have to have a certain amount of stretch in any panel you make. saying one two one two that was how many turns it took to get the material out of the bead roller to switch directions or start another bead so every time I wanted to go back the exact same amount that I came out so I was sure to get the same depth of bead that uh, that I wanted the one is uh, right <coughs> excuse me right in the middle of the die come die chem, but uh, this is what it looks from the inside. And this is what it looks like from the outside. Now I need to clean it up. And I still have a little bit of whoop de doo in this panel. Try to put nice radiuses in the bottom here. So I'm gonna clean it up, take it over to the stretcher and try to just flatten it out a little bit and then we'll go from there. Okay, we're gonna clean this uh, permanent marker off. Super clean, really, really works good.
picture for yourselves. A beautiful bow tie right there. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, I'm going to hit the stretcher and I'll be right back. Okay, um, I don't know if we can see it in the camera or not, but uh, it's pretty flat. It's pretty good shape for the uh, where we're at right now. Uh, so we've got the beads in. That looks good. I uh, went around. It takes like no effort at all to shrink these uh, flanges. You got to be really careful. So we got that. We've got this part. Let's just see how they go together at this point. Okay, that looks really nice. Um, so these beads on the inner lay just inside these beads on the outer, right? So the inner beads are roughly maybe less than an inch inside, probably maybe five-eighths of an inch inside. So they, they basically form two contact areas or four contact areas. This bead and this bead contact the lower. The bead on the bottom contact this surface from the underside. So that's good. Now the next thing is to um, I can, the next thing I have to do on this piece is put the bow tie in. I designed that today. I'm gonna to send it to uh, Rich GT350R. He's going to cut out the die steels for me. He volunteered to do that, and I have to tell you, I really, really appreciate that, Rich. It's gonna make this and the next and the next and the next time I need to do this a whole lot easier and a better quality. So that's coming. Um, and then uh, tomorrow what I'll probably do is uh, start um, using the tipping die and, and, or offset dies and, and put the offset flange in here. So that's, that's what's coming, okay? Uh, basically, we want to get this surface the same height as the top of the bead. So that's going to be our next, uh, our next challenge. Okay, thank you.